Welcome back to TSO Daily Dose. Today, I'm going to be sitting down and having a chat with one of Tasmania's greatest daughters, singer-songwriter and two-time ARIA award winner, Monique Brumby. Monique, thanks for coming in. Hi, Mitch. It's great to be here. It's, it's uh, very exciting to have you in and talking to us. You've done a performance with us today, which we'll talk about later on, but uh, it's so nice to have, you know, such an esteemed... Tasmanian performer, come and sit down. Oh, look, I'm absolutely thrilled to be working with the TSO and to be performing with the calibre of musicians as I was this morning and um, with Amanda and Jono, just incredible. Um, they just make, they made my song come to life in a way that is incredibly moving for me. Uh, we're so delighted to be able to be building a collaboration with you on, on several projects this year and, and next year into the future. Is this the first time you've done something like this? Um, I have sung with an orchestra before at the Melbourne Concert Hall. It was with um, MSO doing Christmas carols. <laughs> <laughs> so Okay, not your own content, which no, is no, what no. you're predominantly known for. Yes. No, my original works, I mean, I've done a lot of collaborations and I love collaboration. Yeah. It's one of the wonderful things about coming back to Tasmania. Um, there's so much great opportunity to collaborate here. But yeah, to work with an orchestra and to work with classical musicians and orchestrators. Um, I've been working with Jabra Latham. That's right, friend of um, the show. Yes, and he's just been wonderful to work with. Um, the first time he came around to my house, we sat in the kitchen, we had a cup of coffee, um, and it felt like we'd known one another forever. It was just really relaxed. And I generally find that with people that live in Tasmania, there's a nice relaxed way that yeah. they have about communication. So you, you've obviously had a, a very long and storied career and, and you've chosen to come back. What, why, what brought you back? to Tasmania. Was it something about the, the career of being over away in some foreign place that, that made you <laughs> yearn for, for that, you know, local connection? Absolutely. I think being away for so long, I really missed the island. I missed the people and I missed the feeling of being here. I've got many generations Tasmanian on both sides of my family. <laughs> um, I don't know what that says. There's a lot of uh, nuance in there. Um, <laughs> But I understand the depths of sadness that run through the island mm. mixed with this glorious, breathtaking landscape that we have. And I feel like all of that gets encapsulated in the art that's created here. Yeah. And I think that artists and creative people that live on the island really galvanise the sense of beauty and wonder that the landscape evokes. And I've wanted to be back here and be immersed in that for many years and finally had the opportunity to relocate in 2018, which I was very excited about. I assume you left when you were quite young. You were 21 when you were signed to Sony, is yes. that right? Yes, when I was 17, mm. I lived in England for a year wow. as a, worked as a boarding house mistress's assistant. <laughs> <laughs> try saying that five times. <laughs> no, I won't even try uh, once. Backwards. Um, <laughs> And that's kind of what that job felt like, to be honest. It was a very strange first job to have out of school. I, I always had this feeling that I had to go away yeah. to find out who I was outside of here. But in saying that, here, Tassie's always been where I needed to be. Um, so it's a really interesting feeling that for so many years I was away and sort of lacked that feeling of comfort yeah. and emotional support that I have from family here. Yeah. And then coming back to, to find that again has just been wonderful. But, yes, many years in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, at the age of 21, I was, I was signed to Columbia Records. That's right. And uh, Celine Dion was in town. They said to me, oh, we've got these songs of yours, Monique. We really like them. This is the people at Sony. And uh, can you come in and meet the A&R manager? And, and so I took my guitar and I played some of my songs in the office of, of the a &R manager. <laughs> and and that actually got me the deal. Wow. Because I, I think that actually playing, sitting here and having this face-to-face -face conversation, yeah. you under, you get to sort of feel the essence of a person more than if you just read a biography or you see them on telly or you hear a demo recording. And it was also right at the end of artists like myself signing major record company contracts yeah. that artists just wouldn't sign today because they don't have to because they can market and promote themselves. Yeah. And they can find other small niche, um, you know, record labels and, 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 you know, licensing companies to help them to promote their music rather than having to sign away their 
their life to, to a major to revenue work company. to someone else's schedule. And I never felt good in that environment. Yeah. It wasn't me. I made an, a record and an EP. Yeah. It was a real stalemate. It was like, we want you to do this song. We don't hear any hits. We want to hear hits. Yeah. If you don't have a hit with this next single, like, and it's like I was 23. Yeah. You know, it's like I don't know even what sort of music I want to make for the next for the rest of my life. I'm just starting, you know. And so these types of things have led me to working, you know, in mentoring and um, yeah, that kind say, of thing. Because you teach at the conservatorium. We were just talking about that, you know, the, the difficulties of the Zoom that. collaboration. But but the actual face-to-face -face mentoring um, sounds very interesting. I love it. Yeah. I really got involved in it, running a program in Melbourne for young people with chronic illness for, uh -huh. for several years. Um, and that was a great way to see the wonderful way that music can heal people and connect community and bring people together. Yeah. And so a big part of my life for the last 15 years of, of making music has been community engagement and working um, with marginalised people, people with disabilities, um, you know, people... Uh, you performed out at the prison... I did. In Risden Vale? I, it, I did. I performed at Risden Prison and that was part of Mental Health Week yeah. um, the last two years and worked in conjunction with Glenorchy Community um, Services. Yeah. I really believe that people can be um, rebirthed and, yeah. and, and become everything that they wanted to be given the chance. Yeah. How do you write the lyrics? Where do they come from? Do, they, do you... Do they gestate for a long time? How, how is this process? So interesting. It's a good question. They come from different places. The song um, that we're performing here for Loving Who I Love really just dropped out of the sky. I was walking uh, to my house in Hobart yeah. just six months ago when I was standing on the corner of Macquarie Street and the lyric, you drive into town with your dog together, you laugh about the way you sound like each other when you're on the phone, just literally came into my head and I saw two people turn in the corner in the car. The sun was shining up Macquarie Street. It was sort of mid-afternoon. The mill there on um, Mole Street, I like to call it Mole. Yes, Mole, yes. It sounds Mole. <laughs> I used to live around the corner. Oh, me. did you? Yeah. Um, the Johnson Brothers Mill. Oh, okay. it's, um, Yeah, it's got the big chimney that yeah, comes and they... Yeah, that's right. My ancestors had that building and made woolen blankets and things. It was a wool mill. Wow. And it was in the late 1800s. And I didn't know this until recently that my fam that was my family's business. They, they were offered $1,000 to come out and to start a, a wool in a business. Oh, wow. And if they produced a certain amount of wool in the first 12 months, they would be given a, a, a thousand pounds um, to establish their business more. And so that's what my ancestors from Scotland came out and did that. Wow. Um, and I went back to, I went to Scotland for the first time last year and so that was really cool. And I feel like all of that went into that song. It's a song about the plebiscite happened in the last few years around marriage equality. Yeah, that's right. And I really felt that that showed how far we'd come but also too brought up some things of how far we still have to go yeah. in terms of people seeing non-judgmentally other people's lives and we all need to feel like someone sees our life and it's a value yeah. and so I really wanted to write a song about reclaiming love yeah. about celebrating happiness um, for all the years that I persecuted myself for feeling like I'd hurt my family, like I, you know, and so I think when people say these hateful things yeah. against people of difference, they don't realise the damage that it does to people's families and then the, the guilt that you feel yeah. as, a, as a person that feels, you feel like you've caused that hurt. Yeah. And so I really wanted to sort of reclaim love and, and reclaim happiness through writing that song. And it was, it's actually the first song I've written on piano and I, I, I sent the piano to Jabra <laughs> and he said, you did a good job with that. I was like, oh, um, give it to Amanda, please, and <laughs> make it sound nice. Um, so, yeah, he orchestrated a beautiful uh, piano, ex extended the piano right out and, um, and wrote the cello line. But it was the 
key and everything was there. The melody was there. The lyrics all came all at the same time. And I run, I ran home. Oh, really? I ran up Mole Street <laughs> and I ran inside and sat down at the piano and I just played it. And I was like, that, that's it. And then it took me about six months to finish. I think it's so special and, and so uh, we're so lucky that we've been able to record it here with you and, oh, and capture, you, I feel lucky. capture you in that moment on that stream. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah, no, it's, it's been, been really great. And we're so lucky to have you here and um, to have you perform uh, for Loving Who I Love. Thank you. And uh, we hope that everyone at home on TSO Daily Dose enjoys Monique Brumby performing her own song, For Loving Who I Love. You're driving to town with your dog Together you laugh about the way you sound like each other When you're on the phone You take it for granted the love you have Cause it's so easy, so relaxed You never feel alone So why do you want to vilify me For loving who I love My heart breaks just like I'd hold a call for when she got cold We'd sing along to songs on the radio Something about a girl named Delilah It made me sad I didn't know why But I should have known Your mother as you're getting older Yeah, just like you, I had a love like that It was so easy, so relaxed I never felt alone So why do you want to feel 